So my name is DJ, and I'd like to welcome you guys to the first episode of our podcast called Observing Consciousness. And uh, the podcast really is about, you know, we like to get into the metaphysics of things. We like to we like spirituality. Um, we like energy work. We also like spiritual awakenings. You know, sense of self, understanding what's going on around us, kind of that that wake up and see that you know lots of us are in uh, autopilot and stuff like that. And we've, we've tried to flip ourselves out of the autopilot and get into more of just observing, understanding, things like that. And we're looking to connect with other people that are like-minded and hear some of their ideas or some of your ideas. And, uh, you know, really just expand the conversation. It's not really, this is the way things are. It's just that these are tools that we found that, that we like to, we use in everyday life and we wanted to share because we think that they're really helping us. But we also don't know all the answers and we know that so we're also looking for new perspectives and new ideas and new areas new rabbit holes to, to run down so this first episode of observing consciousness um we're going to do a little introduction of ourselves and uh you know we'll dig in some of our, our modalities things like that and we hope you enjoy and then uh we'll have another episode up for you here soon thanks so uh dana is is an energy work specialist and i'll let her tell you a little bit about her modalities so my my base is I'm a massage therapist and a body worker um, so that's what I pretty much do for work that's what I practice is hands-on body work and but before I got into body work I was always a receiver of energy healing work and different types of modalities of healing arts um, and then um, as I, after I went through my dark night of the soul, I became a massage therapist body worker because I was, I was, was inspired by a shaman that I met. And through doing the body work and massage, I realized I was a, a, a really gifted energy worker and I was very sensitive to feeling subtle energy. And so I'm a Reiki master now. And so I also do energy work as I do body work. Um, and I grew up as a dancer, so I, and I, bring dance into it sometimes. I like to do something called spirit dance, that's just what I call it. Others call it that too, where I just like to flow with movement and sound, and um, that's one of the mediums I like to work with. And um, also shamanic journey work, where I like to, as I do body work, I like to bring in meditation and shamanic journey work um, because I love psychosomatic healing psychosomatic body work that's one of my biggest passions I love assisting people in in whatever transformation they are going through for themselves and are I'm just assisting them going through something they want and are open and are ready to go through for themselves and I find that I'm just assisting them through that process I'm able to um, physically and energetically and emotionally hold a space and a container for them to process these things. It's amazing. Very blessed and honored to be able to do it. It's and, and Dana's really amazing at, at the work that she does. I've, I've worked with her in the past. Um, so I have a, a background in manufacturing that I did for 25 years and I worked my, I got myself out of that career path and into one that made more sense to me, which is, which is doing some of the stuff that I do now, which is working with people on program, their, their personal programming, their mindset, the way they see the world. Um, the way they perceive things, things like that. Um, <clears throat> and then I, I can also spiritually, um, I, I'm a channel where I can, I can channel um, guides and I can, I can help people understand a little bit more about their path, where they're going. It's, uh, it's, it's somewhat important to understand how this, how this gift works mm. um, because all I am is a mouthpiece to this gift. I don't see any of this stuff for myself. I'm, a, I'm just, I am the channel, I'm the way between them and to, so you can hear what they're saying. Um, the Akashic Files, I have guides. So my, the way that I understand that, that this works is I have guides. My guides have access to the Akashic Files and they can tell you about all of your life paths. I don't personally, I've tried to understand what it looks like and it just it's a blur of just nothingness to me. I can't even make sense of it. Um, I have no idea. It's like looking at it, from what I understand, it's like looking inside of a subconscious or something like that. So I can't, I, I can make absolutely no sense of what it is, but they can so my guides relay the information back it goes actually through your guides because they want to make sure the information is right then the information comes through me and i interpret that information and that's where i'm the mouthpiece i just i can interpret energy and we all have just to be clear we all have the ability to interpret energy if you've ever been 
sitting in a crowded room and you're talking, having a conversation with somebody and for whatever reason you just look up and the first place you look, somebody happens to be making eye contact with you, that is an interpretation of energy. That is, that is translating energy, right? So you're, you're something, somebody is looking at you while you're talking over here, something in your, in your subconscious went off and you thought to yourself, look up. And when you did, there's a whole process that happens there. And for whatever reason, my ability is I can translate that energy and I seem to be able to translate it the way that they're saying it. I don't know why, it doesn't make any sense to me, but that's the gift. So there's no magic that's happening as far as I'm concerned. It's a translation of energy that we can all do. And if you learn to tune into yours, you can hear your own guides without the help of somebody like me. Um, it's possible for all of us. In fact, most of you will have thoughts that come through that you're like, kind of where's that thought coming from? And that's sometimes, you know, listen to your heart. If you meditate and you listen to the difference between your thoughts and when your heart is talking, that's like the guides. The heart is the guides, the, the, upper, the higher self, the soul, and your soul has friends. And we're all here helping. We're yeah, all here. Is... They're all here helping. Like we're all in the sky. They're all on this journey together. So we're all here helping each other. You know what I mean? So that's what my, that is how that gift of mine works is it's not, I'm not there's no magic involved and it's not, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. It's, and you have free will to do whatever you want. So if you say, if I'm saying this is what a path looks like, that's what the path looks like. But if you make a left turn, that's a new path. That path looks different. If you want to take that one, ask me about it. I can tell you about it. Or you can just take it on your own. It doesn't matter. Like free will to do whatever you want. I don't control any of it. You do. I can just tell you about the different paths if you want to hear about them. That's so that's one of the things that I do. Um, and then you're kind of a spiritual advisor, spiritual coach, if you will. But that's again kind of based on that channeling and just being able to, to talk to your guides for you. And um, so yeah, that's that's a little bit about me. And and you are. Um an amazing channel DJ and that's that's a, that was one of the things that spurred this this on as well as getting together to do this um, podcast was that I I recognized DJ is this incredible channel one day he came to help me as a spiritual coach he was able to channel some things for me that helped me to understand and see things that I was going through from from a higher perspective but also a why, you know, sometimes you just are like, why is this happening to me, you know, or for me? <laughs> why is this happening for me? If, and um, sometimes to have a deeper understanding or, you know, if you're somebody who is into past lives or karma or anything like that, um, and you've had experiences for yourself, like such as, um, it helps to maybe search in those directions for some answers it's you know it brings me when you we, we started going down that path and it brings me to something else that i was thinking about and there's a woo woo factor around channeling or spirituality and there's people talk about spiritual awakenings and spirituality and i like to differentiate the two because they're not i don't think they're the same thing a spiritual awakening is sense of self that sense of who you are and we're all you know, if you look in the mirror, you're on some spectrum of your real self. You're not really you. You know, like you, you've got all of this programming and all these other ideas from other people that make up your belief system that until you go back and challenge that belief system and decide who you really are, do you really believe all these things that you were told as a child or do you not believe them? Do you have a different foundation that you want to lay for yourself? And that's a, that's a, a spiritual awakening is going through that and and pulling away the beliefs that aren't necessarily yours and, and examining them for yourself. Maybe you do believe all those things. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. But the spiritual awakening is going through that process. And then spirituality for me is the, that's the metaphysical side. That's the, that's the being able to channel. That's the, that there's this whole thing is connected and that we're bigger, that it's bigger than just us. And that, you know, we, yeah. the mirrors of each other and all this, all these, these other ideas that we talk about, mm -hmm. that's on this, I feel like that's on the spiritual side, but the spiritual awakening, there's no woo woo behind that. That is just finding out who you are, who do you believe you are? Who do you want to be? What do you, you know, and we have the ability to turn ourselves into anything, I believe. So that's, I wanted to, to dig into the differentiate, how I differentiate between spirituality and spiritual awakening. And we will talk about awakenings. And going through that process so i just want people to be aware of yeah. the, the, the different the way that i talk about them differently you know um i know dj is an amazing channel uh, i first hand experience with dj and his wisdom and how um, he has helped me to apply this wisdom to my actual life and um, it has been hugely helpful 
Um, I, I study psychology, I study marriage and family therapy, I study all sorts of things um, therapeutically wise, being a body worker and an energy worker. And um, to be able to have access to apply wisdom and information that might come from another source or come from the source, um, I found for me was really, really beneficial. And we're starting to find that other people are finding it very beneficial as well to understand why something might be playing out in their life karmically or what have you. So the cards, so tell me a little more about the cards because I'm not, I'm, I know tarot, I know of tarot, I don't know a lot about tarot. So you're gonna pick so, cards and basically what you're gonna do is you wait for one to, to just kind of pop out of the deck, is that what you're Um, Sometimes I do that. So today I'm just pulling from the Psychic Tarot. Okay. The Psychic Tarot by John Holland. I really like this deck, but um, this is just... And so different decks, different, so a different, if there was a different uh, deck that was made by somebody else, they'd have yeah. the cards that have different meanings, or...? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes. So, yeah. Sometimes they're similar, sometimes they're different. So we're just going to pull a card for, just for fun, to start off this beautiful energy that's coming in for us today. New beginnings, zero point manifesting. How fascinating yes. is that? So, uh, zero point manifesting. We're gonna, our podcast is observing consciousness, Ooh. and this is the beginning of our podcast. Yeah, I need to look that up. What a fascinating, what a fascinating way to get going. So, uh, observing consciousness. Um, when I think about observing consciousness, I think about somebody told me one time that everybody is mirrors of us. And that idea goes back into religion fairly deeply. Like some of our some of our oldest religions believe in the idea of mirrors, including Christianity. It's not said exactly as mirrors, but even in Christianity, they talk about love thy neighbor as you love thyself, or something along those lines. And that's you know those are that that's kind of saying you know those are mirrors of us. You know, be be kind to them. And <clears throat> if I, I feel like you know somebody just somebody said this to me in passing, or it was, it was a conversation we had that people are mirrors of us, and I took that. That fairly seriously because I'd never heard that before and I had somebody in my life at the time that was that she this this gal that I was talking to had mentioned she's she goes oh what an interesting shadow you have mm -hmm. and it was somebody very close to me in my life and I want a shadow I'm like that's a, and, I, and I started looking at it and all, all of the things that I was talking about to her were like shadows of they were issues that I was having and those those issues were you know my lack of acceptance for what their journey was and so I found myself going, wow, that's a shadow of me. If that's a shadow of me and people are mirrors of me, and you know, what does that really mean? And if people are mirrors, it's like, is that, is that me? Is that another consciousness of me? Is that another existence of me? Or is this, you know, it's like, I had these thoughts before that I'm here by myself, I'm all alone. And it's like, if, if maybe this is just projections of my subconscious, and I think I'm having a conversation with Dana, but I'm just sitting here by myself and I project Dana so I have somebody that talks back to me. And it's like, if everybody's mirrors of me, maybe those, they're all just my subconscious, they're projections of my subconscious, maybe none of them are real, who knows? But everybody seems very real to me. And, and part of my journey has been to learn about accepting other people and not judging them. Because I spend a lot of time judging people and it's like, and, I, and if, if these are mirrors of me, and I don't know that I, I I'm not 100% sure I believe it, but if it is, there are mirrors of me, there are other parts of my consciousness, then why would I take time to make sure that their life is just a little bit harder? Why would I take time to put bad energy on them? Why would I take time to make them feel worse about themselves, to judge them, to make fun of them, to whatever you might do to somebody that is, is the opposite of you or a mirror of you? <laughs> if it's some part of you, then... You know, there's, there needs to be acceptance for, for that person and like leave them better than you found them. Even if it means that you just, you're sending a little bit of good energy their way, that you go, hey, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not judging you. I, I see what, you know, you're, maybe you're not my cup of tea, you're not the reflection that I want in my life, but you are working out your problems. And if I can wish you well on your journey, but I don't have to interact with it, why can't you do that? Or why can't I do that? And so I started trying to apply a lot of that. And that's, you know, that brought a lot of peace to my life when I started doing that. But also the, the, as I unfold that, because this is still kind of a, you know, this, this concept is maybe a year old to me. As I unfold more of that, it's like, man, how fascinating are mirrors of one another. I mean, some of the most heinous people that, you know, it's, I feel like anybody that comes into your life, if they, whether they come into your life in passing or they come into your life 
actually into your physical life and you talk to them and you have conversations with them or maybe it's just like a, a news article that you see and you get very involved in it. If anything you're spending a lot of time on and, and it's a, if there's a person involved, it's like maybe it's some sort of a mirror of you, regardless of where they're at. If the internet is the thing that connects us or not, if they're really in your, in your personal space or not, maybe that's still, I mean, there's still a reflection of you. And if you're spending time on that, looking at that, understand that that's very possibly, that's in you. That's not very possibly, that's 100% in you. You could be that person. The only thing that stops you is what's going on up here for you. Like what your beliefs are, what you believe is happening. Some people believe that they should be killing people. Well, I don't believe that. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with it, but that is in me. I could definitely be doing that. I could definitely make it, make a left turn and go, I can I throw all my morals out the window, throw everything that I've, that I've learned out the window and go, yeah, I think I'm going to kill people now. That's within me. And so when I think of observing consciousness, that's like everybody's mirrors of me. And I'm looking at, that's how I'm looking through the lens right now is, is observing consciousness is everybody's mirrors of me. And I'm learning to accept and not judge those mirrors of me kind of no matter what they are because they're on their journey I'm on my journey and I'm trying to I'm trying to focus on my journey because I can't even if they are mirrors and there that is another consciousness of me I have zero control over it like I can't I can't manipulate it I mean I can try to socially engineer things but at the end of the day I only control me they have free will to do what they're going to do so I have to let them be on that journey and that's observing consciousness to me is, is is learning to accept without judgment and just love I look at the the lessons and you know, I had, a, I had a buddy of mine that, that just recently had somebody cutting his uh, palm trees and the gardener, the guy that came by to do it, he was, he was going like kind of door to door, seeing with them where all the palm trees were at and uh, stopped in and said so it was going to be, you know, it's going to be 1200 bucks to cut the palm trees. And, you know, these are pretty tall palm trees. And I want to say there's like eight of them on his property or something. Well, the guy, when he was, when he was cutting down the prawns, one of them fell on his lawnmower, broke his lawnmower. He was, the guy that was helping him was like putting the prawn, the prawns inside of the, the, pool box, you know, instead of like putting them in the garbage. And it was just, you know, when the job was quote unquote done, uh, my buddy was, he was, he was upset. He was pretty angry. And he's like, man, this guy, he was just, he was venting and he was, he was really ticked off that it cost him 1200 bucks and he paid the guy and now he's got a broken lawnmower. And the way that I looked at that and I said, Hey man, like, and I, and I explained, you know, he and I are on the same page with these shadow or these, uh, these mirror ideas. And I said, Hey, well, let, let's think about that. If that's a mirror view, what you know how would you want to handle that if that was an actual mirror of you if that was actually somebody that that you cared for but you guys run you know you don't really know each other right now but it's somebody that you know deep down you care for would you handle that differently would you be this pissed off at him and angry at him or would you pull him to the side and say hey man look this is you know this is the way i expect this job to be done and you could be calm about it and give him something that he could go on his way with and, and walk away with you know he may be angry at the at the conversation but he could walk away with a lesson and reflect on that later and go you know i probably could do a better job or I could be more careful about what's underneath. But instead, the guy kind of doesn't have any idea because my buddy didn't say anything to him. So he doesn't have any idea. He just he just knows he got it. He just made 1200 bucks and maybe he does or doesn't realize what he was doing. And as he knows his buddy was or wasn't shoving stuff into the, into the pool toy or the pool toy box, whatever the case is, you know what I mean? But there's, so you can handle these situations in any way you want to, whatever you believe. If you believe that's a mirror of you, treat it better than you, leave it better than you found it. Treat it with the, the minimum, send good energy to it. You know, if there's more you could do, if you can give it a little advice, give it some advice. If it's not ready to hear advice, don't do it. Just just wish it well and let it be on its way. And uh, that's a lesson for, for anybody that wants to apply that idea. But it's not it's not necessarily easy because sometimes in the heat of the moment, like it's, uh, you know, emotions take over and it's, it's hard to differentiate yourself from the emotion. I am angry. Well, when you're angry, it's hard to, it's hard to be, your, be angry and also be DJ at the same time. Um, which is why I think you're an amazing spiritual coach, but you're... You're, that is really helpful, and I love when you tell these stories. So for me, kind of said it in our first session, but observing consciousness for me is definitely the ability to watch our thoughts. You know, you can you can watch your mind, you can watch your thoughts um, from some objective point of view, and you can also watch other people's thoughts. So you can observe the thoughts, you can be the observer, and um, so I can observe my behavior. I can observe the thoughts that I have. And so um, that would be the consciousness, observing consciousness for me. But, um, you know, when we talk about mirrors, DJ, you know, where do we start? Like, you know, where do we, where do we get the idea that we are mirrors? You know, where does that really come from? Like, why are we mirrors? You know, it's, there's, there's some kind of a bigger, there's a, there's, you know, 
let's get into the idea of a simulation. You know, our, our minds are basically computers and we, not basically, they, they operate like computers. They're pattern recognition systems. They recognize patterns, our brains puts them together using sensors, you know, just like a, a Tesla has sensors, you can tell it kind of where the road's at and it makes the, creates this picture. Well, the Tesla's not seeing the picture the same way that it shows you the picture. The Tesla has sensors that sense lines and they, they go, okay, there's lines over here and there's you know, broken lines over here. And it's got all this, like all these sensors. Well, our eyes, our ears, our nose, taste, all the, these are all, these are all sensors for us. And then our brain puts together what's happening within those sensors. Um, so that we're a computer, a supercomputer. Like if you think about the fact that our bodies are soft, but our bodies would essentially, if our brain is the, the hard drive, our bodies are the shell of the computer. And these bodies are not just soft. I mean, they're, they're flexible. We can run with them. We can, we can manipulate 3D space with them. Um, you know, we can physics are the only thing to stop our body from doing whatever we want to do. We can live off the grid. The only thing that we take to, to recharge ourselves is we don't have to plug into a wall. We just need sleep, we need food, and we need water. And those are the three basics. Everything else beyond that is just, you know, society's made it up, whatever. You don't have to have a house. Like, you can figure it out without it. But, all, you know, the so when I think of something like this, it's like, well, maybe if we are in a simulation, that it's just like, instead of the, you know, we're in, we have dimensions, and dimensions are all around us, and our consciousness, it's this energy that's vast enough to be in, very, in, in several different places to, you know, ultimately... If I'm to believe, you know, my belief system is this journey is, you know, life itself. It's about love. It's about relationships. It's about learning to accept without judgment another person, which is pure love. And then to love people that are close to you purely. Let them be on their journey. Accept them and love them purely. No judgment. But to be there and be that, that you know, companion if you are or, or family member, whatever it is. But to be there and supportive, pure love. So if that's what we're, that's the purpose of life then and we're in some kind of a simulation where maybe some other being some other something else made up this structure that we're in this little this weird cons computer simulation thing did they make it up for that purpose or do i did i misunderstand the purpose i don't know but i think the purpose is is that is that we're here for love and i think that our we don't understand how vast our energy is mm. and how many consciousnesses possibly we could have i mean the sky's the limit and again, these are just, you know, these are ideas. There, there's yeah. you know, all kinds of stuff that goes through my head. And that's why we're having, yeah. that's why we're doing this podcast. Exactly. This is why we're having that conversation. And you got the message in 2020 that you were supposed to do a podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. In 2020. So I was, uh, I've done ayahuasca a handful of times. And during one of my ayahuasca trips, I was actually, I was, I was told that I should, that I should be doing something on a podcast. And I never could figure out what that, what, what my, what could I bring to a podcast? I didn't know what I had to offer. Um, but I listened to the message and I bought all the gear. <laughs> so as Dana and I decided that, that maybe we should do a podcast together, um, I said, well, that's, that's awesome because I already have everything. I've had it for three years. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating how the journey unfolds. And you know, Dana was talking about people coming to us with these to have these conversations. And it's honestly, I probably more often than people come to me having the conversations is I, I, I go to people and I'll, I'll drag them into the weeds. Um, because there's so many things that I, you know, I see people going through their struggles and I, you know, for whatever reason, people do like to come to me and they'll talk to me and they'll, they'll just unload some of their, some of their problems. And, uh, that's, that's where, you know, as I've gone through my own journey, that's one of the, one of the most fun conversations for me is people that are going through their own journey, having their own issues and being able to lend just a little something that I learned to them. And it's like, you know, one of the things is belief makes up nine tenths of our reality. If you stop and think about belief makes up nine tenths of your reality, what do you mean by that? Well, everything that we see here is what you, you and I can agree on, that we can see. But what we believe is going on within what we can see, that's, that's our own journey. And belief being nine tenths of our reality, that means that that's whatever we believe to be happening within, these, within the confines of what we can both agree on, that's what's happening for us. So you can have a sane person and a, you know, a completely happy person right next to each other in the same environment, but what they believe is going on internally, that's what their struggle is, that's what their journey is. And when people see that their belief, you know, they believe they're in this hard spot, they believe they're in these spaces, they believe they're going through this, and they believe they can't get out of it. And to just turn it, you know, you, you're, if you turn your belief just a little bit, you can start changing some of that. It doesn't happen overnight, it's a slow process, but it's just, they're fun conversations to have. 
the, the power of the people that we have within ourselves and then our own perspectives. And it just goes so deep in the weeds. One of my one of my favorites is just the belief makes up nine tenths of your reality. But it's it holds so truth so true for me because you, I have my journey is so specific to me. And when I get next to somebody else and I listen to what their journey sounds like, that their belief is what's happening for them. It's like they believe there's people out to get them. They believe they've got all these terrible relationships. They believe all this stuff is happening. It's and it's their their belief. And it's you know for me, I used to have those same beliefs. And I was able to shift over to, I believe these things are good and they're happening for purpose and I'm trying, I'm supposed to learn something from them. And as each one of those things, I started to, to shift my belief away from it's happening to me and it's happening instead of it's happening to me, it's happening for me. And I, as I learned through it, I learned different parts about myself, different parts of my journey to learn to, to accept another person. Um, you know, through my journey, I learned what pure love was, which pure love, I didn't know, I didn't know the meaning of that, but pure love is acceptance of another person without judgment it's easy to love somebody purely that's a stranger that's walking down the street than it is to love somebody close to you because you're so wrapped up emotionally in their results you want good for them you think you know a better way than they do you're in and you find you find yourself judging their journey and not accepting them even though they might be your spouse they might be your sister they might be you know somebody that you love you pure you love them as much as you can love somebody but it's not pure love because it's got judgment in it and it's learning to love, and that's that's the ultimate journey for all of us, I think, is pure love of another person, acceptance without judgment. If we can do that to everybody, which how how difficult is that journey? I've, I've got people it's in my very life. Difficult. <laughs> I've got people in my life that I struggle yeah. with this, but I think that's the ultimate goal, and that's where peace is at within, with for each one of us. Is if you have acceptance of another person, they don't have problems with you, and you don't have problems with them. They don't cause issues. You don't spend bad energy on them. You don't spend any energy on them. It's if if it's energy at all, it's good energy because you're accepting their journey. You see what they're going through, uh, heartfelt, be good on your way, or if I can help, whatever. You know, there's, there's all these ways that you can affect people's journey, or you can look at their journey and judge it. And as you judge it, you think they're doing something wrong, and when you think they're doing something wrong, you're, uh, you're sending bad energy their way. You know, it's, there's so many ways that you can go about this journey, and each one, is, each one of us is on our own journey, and learning to accept that, that you only control you, and that your journey is your journey and their journey is theirs. If they intersect together, you control how it intersects. If you decide it's, it's not gonna intersect on a daily basis, guess what? You have free will to turn your back on it and walk away from it. There's only so much they can do there, right? And their journey is their journey. There's only so much, so many ways that you're allowed to affect their journey. If it's your spouse, they give you a certain amount of how much you're gonna affect. They give you a certain amount of that, that that's given. And they take it back at any time because they have free will. And we see it all the time in relationships where somebody's not doing what somebody else wants. It's, each person's on their own journey. So sorry to get off on a diatribe there, but that's these are some of the conversations that people don't recognize sometimes that, that everybody is on their own journey and they're trying to do best for them. They're not necessarily out to affect you. And you just, you happen to be affected because you, you've allowed yourself to be. And if you take back that control and don't allow them to have that control, look at what they're doing and go, okay, if I don't agree with it, that's a lesson for me. How do I, how do I change that in my future? How do I, how do I not affect, let people affect me this way? And start looking at the results of your journey and not theirs. And that's where there's so much there's so much to learn within, but there's so much to be accepted by the people or from the people around you for yourself. Yeah. You have to observe yourself doing these things. You have to observe yourself in judgment. You have to observe yourself wanting to control somebody else. And it's really difficult, you know, and especially when you're living in a space with somebody like, you know, I just previously went through and you're constantly challenged with acceptance and love and wanting to love that person. But <clears throat> um, it, those things become really, that's where the challenge comes in. And, and remembering that really helped me through that challenge. You know, remembering to keep coming back to that conscious awareness of being in as much non-judgment as possible and, and letting that go more and more. Not judging the situation, but seeing observing the situation from a much higher perspective. And the more I worked on observing the situation from a higher perspective, the better I got at releasing control of certain things or um, coming, being able to come back to feeling love for the other person quicker and quicker every time. Whereas I would want to hold on to anger and frustration and all those feelings that can happen between people that do happen, let's face it, on earth, like in humans, like this is constantly happening. 
um, as you go into the mirrors of reflection conversation, you know, they are ultimately all pieces of yourself that you're dealing with. But um, at the end of the day, the more you practice that and can observe it, the better you become in it and the quicker you come back to that love more and more and more and more. Part of my journey has been doing a lot of observing of myself and understanding like what makes me the way that I am. And I realized that a lot of my, you know, I had some, I had some struggles in relationships. Um, I've had a lot of struggles in relationships and they've, my struggles in relationships are because of my understanding of relationships and, and the way that I understood them as a child. And, and then we all try to apply that to one another. And it's being able to go back and, and understand that we all learn this idea and all of our ideas from somebody different. And if you can have a little empathy for where they might have learned from, it's not necessarily that they're doing it to do it wrong or they're trying to do something wrong. They're doing it the way that they understand. And it's like ego is very interesting in the way that it learns. You know, it's ego makes up us. And it's like the way that the ego learns and it takes information in and the way it reapplies it. And it's like, it's, it's a very fascinating and it's a very nuanced and detailed topic that goes in. Each one of us is nuanced in that way. And that's the interesting thing. When you, when, if you can find two people that can apply love to one another and they learn it from two completely different sources, they, they also learn from each other. Like there's so much, there's so much happening there. There's, there's so much evolution that's happening there. But point of bringing all this up is looking at program, look at where people learn from before you, you know, if you can, before you judge and before you jump into their, this is just who they are, not necessarily who they are, it's, it's what they learn. And they're, we're people, we can all learn. So, so that's, and that's one thing that I've done is I've, I've reprogrammed myself. I've learned that, that this is part of the journey. Everybody's on their own journey. I used to be very judgy and very, you know, somebody was dressed funny walking down the street. I thought that they were different than me. So there you know, must be something wrong. And I had all of these weird judgments within myself. Now it's like, it's a little different. It's like, it's so much easier to just like wish them well. Like if that's the way they want to express themselves, then so be it. They're not affecting me in one way at all. And literally, when I started doing that, like all of my, all of the relationships, all of my interactions with people, like the, I haven't had a bad interaction with, with anybody in f quite a few years, like probably since I started this journey of just acceptance, there's, there's just no, no bad interactions. People are friendly. When you're friendly to other people, they're friendly back. You know, they're, everybody has reflections of you. So when you get shitty reflections, guess what? Those are shitty reflections of you. Just like when I get a shitty reflection, it's a shitty reflection of me. Um, and I still have them. There's, you know, they're still out there. I, you know, if you choose to spend time in that reflection, if you choose to get in that fight with that reflection, and you choose to actually get physical with it, well, that's on you. You can choose to turn your back and go in another direction. Choose to spend time with another reflection. Ideas, just, just different, different ways. You yeah, can I think that's the key: is choose to spend time with another reflection. Although the most challenging time is in traffic, I feel like <laughs> that's the, that's one of the most challenging well, times. Yeah, that's... I'm going to send them love. They almost just killed me on the freeway on the way here, literally. Somebody, like, just came this close to hitting me and cutting. Like, I was like, wow, okay. And, uh, but you know. here's the thing. So here's my question for you. Did they see you? Were they trying? I do were, not know. Were they trying to cut you off? Did they go, that's Dana? They I'm were just to cut crazy. No, they were not. So your perception can be that they just tried to kill me. Or your perception could be like, oh shit, they didn't see me. Like that was like that was close, mm -hmm. right? Either or one he of, did see me and he didn't care. Both he of those was just gonna do what he wanted but to do. All, th all three of those things are real. All yeah. three of those things are your, whatever you believe is happened yeah. is what happened. So yeah. it's that's your belief. Nine tenths of reality is your right. belief. Right. What happened just happened. It's right. not a good or a bad thing until you apply good or bad to right. it. Yeah. So it was you know yeah. the guy could it could have been from your perspective a mistake yeah. or yeah. it could have been he's an asshole. Right. Whatever you want to apply yeah. to it. Absolutely. That's good that's, example. That's a that's but, a good example of what we're talking about. That's where everything we're talking about. That's where microdose would get you. <laughs> microdose. If you guys have uh, if you guys have some examples of, of stuff that you've gone through and you get, you want to throw them out there to us, or you need some help like working through your own, like hey, this is a problem I'm having. What what kind of perspective do you guys see about this, or what would you throw it at? Um, I, I love stuff like that. Throw it at us. We're, we're happy if it's uh, if it's something we can use uh, on the podcast. We will. If it's just we can answer something in the comments, we'll do that too. Um, again, this this whole the whole idea is this is we we want to be able to, like we we think we feel like we have a set of tools that's really helped us. You know, we're not saying these are the answers. It's just a set of answers that works really well for us. And we want to share those with you guys and see if they can bring perspective. And from the other side of that is we're very open-minded. And, and if, you know, maybe you see something that we don't or you have a, a different way of dealing with it that we don't, 
And uh, we would love to have that perspective shared with us too, because you know we're, we're always trying to apply stuff to life. It's not uh, we're not set in our ways by any stretch of the imagination. So uh, I think we're going to wrap this up, and Dana wants to do a uh, little blessing, a little to close us out with. So Dana. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to share a blessing of some cool energy and some balancing energy and. Um, and some peaceful energy coming in through to this week for for us and for all our friends and all our family and all beings of Mother Earth, all of nature, all the animals. Just a nice sense of peace and calm, especially in any areas where there's a lot of um, tension or anger. We're just gonna visualize a lot of cool and calm and peaceful flow flowing into that and um, it's a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to be speaking with DJ. It's a blessing that we um, have this opportunity to communicate um, on a platform such as this. And we just want to thank, as always, all our angels and guides and helpers that help DJ and I um, uh, through our spiritual work and our protectors and, and all of everyone's everyone's helpers and guides and angels for the whole planet we want to thank thank all the all the helpers and the angels and um, each other and each other most importantly while we're here doing this and thank you so much thank you dj